Hello, how are you all? I hope you are fine by the grace of God. Thank you for watching Nergia Cartoons. Today, we have brought a very important topic for you, which will provide you with a lot of knowledge. In this video, we will share something that, if you follow, will greatly benefit you. We live in a society surrounded by various types of people, and it's often hard to discern their true nature. They may seem good on the surface, but only God knows their reality. In today's episode, we will discuss two types of people. If you notice these signs in anyone after watching this video, you should eliminate them from your life immediately. You do not need to keep such people around because they can only bring you harm and no benefit. Their sole purpose is to distance you from God and bring you closer to Satan. As you know, Satan is active 24-7, and his agents are always working, searching for people they can easily manipulate. It has often been observed that many people get distracted and led astray. We should always seek God's protection and ask Him to keep us under the shadow of His angels, so these people cannot take advantage of us. We must be cautious so that these individuals do not succeed in their mission. In today's video, we will discuss what God tells us about this. 2 Corinthians 11:13-15 states, For such people are false apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising, then, if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end will be what their actions deserve. 2 Timothy 3, 8 warns, Just as Jansen Jamers opposed Moses, so also these teachers oppose the truth. They are men of depraved minds, who, as far as the faith is concerned, are rejected. I also want to share with you that in this episode, there will be two scenes. Just like in my previous videos, where each video contained two messages with different characters, this video will also follow the same format. There will be two different stories running simultaneously with different characters. I am telling you this so that you don't get confused and can easily understand what's happening. Let's see what this episode has in store for us. Sophia, what's wrong today? You look really down. Did your mother-in-law call you this morning and give you another lecture, as usual? I am so tired of her constant nagging. I don't understand when she'll realize that having a baby is not in my control. When God decides to bless us with a child, it will happen. But she just doesn't get it. She calls me whenever she feels like it and starts lecturing me. If I had a mother-in-law like yours, I would have straightened her out in two minutes. I know how to handle such people. Anyway, let's forget about all this. Tell me, did you go to the doctor? What did they say? Yes, I went to the doctor with my husband last week. She gave me some medicines and was very cooperative. She told me not to worry and assured me that I would have a child soon. But I told her that it's been three years since I got married, and I have been taking medicines and praying, but still no child. The pressure is immense. Whenever my in-laws feel like it, they give me a hard time. Doesn't your husband feel ashamed? Doesn't he stop his parents from talking to you like this? It's not your fault that you don't have a child. My husband tried to stop them from talking to me like this, but you know my mother-in-law. She just needs an excuse to start unnecessary conversations. As soon as she's in a bad mood, she calls me up and starts complaining. I am very fortunate in my life. I have three children, a loving husband, and everything I need. I don't have any worries. But of course, since you are my friend, it bothers me to see you so troubled. All right, go back to your cabin and get to work. I have a lot of pending work today and need to finish the final report for the boss. He was asking about it. You know how hard it is to concentrate when I'm so depressed. Okay, I'll get back to work. But seriously, I am very worried about you. When I see you so sad, it makes my heart ache too. Look, just as you work hard all day in the office, so do I. I want us both to come home in the evening with some happiness on our faces. But your face always looks downcast, and it makes me feel even more stressed. This isn't the way to live, constantly sulking over something. Why don't you talk to your mom? She has made my life miserable. She constantly taunts me about not having a child. Tell me, what is my fault in this? How long am I supposed to endure her harsh words? 
Don't I have the right to live peacefully? Whenever she's in a bad mood, she calls me and starts ranting like a non-stop radio. What have I done wrong? Okay, listen to me. There's no need to get so upset and speak ill of my parents. Look at their age. They are old now, and in this stage of life, they can be just like children. You shouldn't take their words so seriously. Just listen from one ear and let it out from the other. Mr. William, it's very easy for you to say, listen with one ear and let it out the other. But you should know that between those two ears, there is a brain. Whatever comes in through one ear first goes through the brain before it can be dismissed. Your mom used to bother me with phone calls, and now your dad has started to harass me too. I have taken every possible medicine and pray to God constantly. What else can I do? This is not within my control, and your parents need to understand that. She has often told me in anger that marrying her son to me was a mistake and that I am cursed because I cannot give her a grandchild. What more can I say? I have already tried to explain this to my parents many times at your insistence. I will try again to make them understand not to speak to you in a way that hurts you. Now please, let's stop this. Dinner is ready. Let's have dinner together. As husband and wife not let these useless worries take over our minds. Leave these things to God. If we try to control everything ourselves, there is no point. This is in God's hands, and when the time is right, we will have a child. Don't you have any shame? Since I arranged your marriage to my son, I've been suffering mentally, and now you're trying to turn him against me. This morning, before leaving for the office, he came to me and said that you're bothering him because of me. Is this what you wanted, for my son to be against me? Mother-in-law, I have not turned your son against you. I only told him that I am exhausted from dealing with your constant complaints. You need to stop these actions or else you'll see another side of me. If I can arrange a marriage for my son, he can also give you a divorce if needed. Do you think that just because you're his wife, you can control him? That's your biggest mistake. Remember, my son will do whatever I tell him. You're saying this because I haven't had a child yet, and now you're telling me such big things that I should tell him to divorce you? I've warned you. Keep this in your mind. If you turn my son against me again after this warning, I will not tolerate it. I don't even want to see your face anymore. My mother-in-law has said such harsh things to me in anger. It pains me that she has no shame, speaking like this with such heart. Today, she crossed all limits by telling me that if I don't have a child, she will make my husband divorce me. What fault do I have in this? I am always praying to God, never missing a prayer. I don't understand why God doesn't answer my prayers. He sees everything and knows the truth, but still, after all these prayers, why is he not granting me a child? I don't know the reason, and my mother-in-law is taking advantage of this situation, saying whatever comes to her mind against me. I am so exhausted from this kind of life. It seems like your mother-in-law has been rude to you again today, which is why you are so upset. I can see from your eyes that you are really distressed at home. Why do you keep asking me the same thing if you know everything? I am constantly praying, never missing a prayer. I cry out to God asking for a child, but I don't understand why he's not listening. I don't know why God isn't answering your prayers, but I'm not as religious as you are, and I don't read the Bible. Still, I am very happy in my life. I don't understand how you can be so happy with everything you have, children, a good husband, a home, and a job. I constantly reflect on my situation, but I don't know why I'm not getting any answers. Some things are best kept private, and it's better to leave them that way. You share your troubles with me, but I'm not used to sharing my own happiness with others. It's unfortunate that you think it's wrong to share your happiness with others. I am saddened to hear this. You always ask me about my life, and I share everything with you. 
Please don't take my words too harshly. I only said this because you're my friend. Don't be upset. Everything will be fine. Please tell me what makes you so happy. You mentioned something earlier about a secret that makes you very happy. I used to be very troubled like you, always praying, but my prayers weren't answered. Now, I'll give you a hint about why I'm so happy. Whatever I think about is fulfilled. My husband is completely under my influence, and my father-in-law and mother-in-law don't dare to say anything in front of me. Please, tell me what it is that you're not sharing. Don't you have any compassion for me? Doesn't it bother you to see my situation? I'm always so stressed at the office, it's very disappointing. Look, I've told you before that I live my life on my own terms. I do what I feel is right and I never compromise on my happiness, no matter what. I'm the kind of person who won't sacrifice my joy for anything, even if it means going to great lengths. If you are willing to do the same, let me know. Okay, please don't drag this out. If you want to share and help me with my difficulties, Please tell me what you do that brings so much happiness into your life while I face so much sadness. I will explain everything to you in detail. But today, as you know, we have a meeting at the office, and all the employees are in the boss's chamber. We will sit down and discuss it further later. I'll explain everything to you in detail, and you'll see how much change it will bring to your life. Paul, I really feel sorry for you when you're so distressed and always empty-handed. I don't understand why your parents treat you differently from your siblings, even though you are also their child. They should care for you just as they do for your brothers and sisters. Uncle Oliver, that's not the case. My parents love me very much, and my brothers also take care of me. It's not as you think. From what I can see from your words and your living situation, it seems like there is a significant difference in how your parents treat you compared to your siblings. Uncle Oliver, I respect you a lot and am confused by what you're saying. You are older than me and I hold you in high regard. Can you explain why you think my parents treat me differently compared to my siblings? What have you noticed that makes you say this? Honestly, you're still young and not as experienced. I've spent a large part of my life and have a lot of experience. I noticed things that you might not see. Your parents' treatment of you is poor, and perhaps you have a blind spot that prevents you from seeing it clearly. Uncle, please explain further. I'm not understanding your point. Take, for example, just a few days ago. The college your father admitted you to is not very high rated, whereas your other brother was admitted to the most expensive college in the city, which is high standard. When he completes his education and moves on to university, his chances for advancement will be much higher compared to yours. You need to fight for your rights with your parents and siblings. If you don't, you'll face a lot of struggles ahead. But Uncle Oliver, I asked my father to admit me to a college close to home. Many of my school fellows are also getting admitted to that college. My father agreed to my request. Son, there's a difference between experienced and inexperienced individuals. You lack experience. Your father has always wanted you to go to a college where your growth would be limited. He has always favored your siblings over you. I am trying to explain this to you. My own parents did something similar to me. I want to prevent you from going through the same struggles I faced. If you doubt this, go to your father today and ask him to admit you to the same college as your brother. Listen to his response and then let me know if I was wrong or right. I am trying to help you, but you seem to be reacting negatively to my advice. If what you say is true, then my father has treated me very unfairly. He shouldn't have done this to me. I'm going to take your advice and test my father today. I'll ask him to admit me to the same college as my brother and see what he says. Besides this, there are many other things. From what I've heard about your father, it seems he doesn't even want to share his inheritance with you. I've heard him speak about you in a way that suggests he doesn't care for you. This world can be harsh, and sometimes people are not what they seem. I'm telling you this to help you, but please keep my name confidential. If you reveal it, it could cause you trouble. The most that could happen to me is that your father might confront me, but that's not a big deal. You'll see over time that my advice was right. For now, understand that not everyone is supportive. I hope this information helps you. I don't know how long I will live. 
today I am here, but one day I will be gone. Remember my words when I'm not around. Make sure to resolve your issues before something bad happens. If you understand what I'm saying and if your parents and siblings don't value you, then you must stand up for your rights. You need to be straightforward. Otherwise, as I have said, the only outcome will be loss. Okay, I understand your point, and I am grasping a lot of what you're saying. If my parents and siblings really think of me this way, I will have to stand up for my rights and be proactive. I'll address this issue directly, as you advised. Daddy, I want to discuss something with you. If you have time. Yes, son, tell me what you want to discuss. How could my son want to talk to me and I not have time? I want to talk about my college admission. I don't want to go to the college where you've admitted me. I want my admission in the same college where you admitted my brother. I admitted you to the college you asked for. Why are you suddenly saying you want to go to a different college? I just want you to listen to me. Please, consider changing my admission. It doesn't work like that. You asked me to admit you to that college, and I did. If you want to move to your brother's college, give me a month. I need time to arrange the funds, as changing your course will require additional money. I'll arrange your admission if I can get the funds. I can't wait a month. I need the admission done today. Paul, I would have gone and broken the bank to get the funds. I have a small phone shop and six children to support. I had to make sure everyone's needs are met. If you had told me earlier, I could have arranged your admission along with your brothers. I always consider the happiness of my children. You asked me to admit you to the nearby college, and I did. Now you want me to arrange it in one or two days, but I can't manage it without a month's time due to financial constraints. Please try to understand my situation. I understand your situation very well, but it seems like you have funds for my siblings but not for me. I feel like you're treating me differently from them. Stop talking nonsense. Where did you get this idea that I am treating you differently? I have never thought like this about my children. Don't lie to me. I love all my children equally. If you keep accusing me like this, I won't tolerate it. You're saying this, but it feels like you favor my siblings over me. If this continues, I can't accept it. How can you talk to your father like this? Do you know who I am? Is this how you speak to your father? I don't know where you'll arrange the money from, but I need my admission in that college in two days. Otherwise, you don't know what I will do. You have the audacity to threaten your own father? You're just a child. I'm hurt by how you're speaking to me and showing such disrespect. It's strange that a child, just out of school, is already showing such bad behavior and negativity. Who is teaching you this? You've just started college, and your attitude is already going downhill. Catherine, you don't realize how I spent last night. I was just waiting for the morning so I could meet you because our conversation was incomplete. I want to hear everything you didn't get to say. Yes, you Rieger. Just like you, I also want to live a happy life. Please tell me what the matter was that you started discussing but didn't finish. Forget about that topic. Listen to me, I've brought some books for you. Also, there are some pictures you should put up in your room. Then you'll see how many positive changes start happening in your life. I don't understand how putting up pictures or receiving these books will bring changes to my life. They don't seem to have any value. If you put them up, you'll see results after a few days. You'll realize their value soon. Just try it, and then tell me how it worked for you. All right, I'll put them up in my home. They look very nice. Good. Don't ask too many questions now. Keep these items in your home, and you'll see the happiness and changes in your life, including having children. All right, I'll take these items with me. I'll keep the books with my favorite ones and put up the pictures in my home. Let's see how much truth there is in what you've said and how much is false. Good. Now don't ask too many questions. I've shared my secret with you, so take these items and place them in your home. Okay, I understand your point. Dear Najee family, by now you should have understood the episode we discussed earlier. 
The two individuals we mentioned are the ones who try to distance you from God and lead you to the path of Satan. They take advantage of your desperation and listen with great interest to your suffering and confessions. Once they see that you are completely hopeless and distanced from God, they try to further lead you astray. Such individuals around you, who engage in these kinds of manipulative conversations, are to be avoided. Because they listen to your words with great interest, desiring to understand your troubles and vulnerabilities. Always remember that no power in this world can stand against God, and nothing is more powerful than God. Any force or entity is insignificant compared to God. Those who follow Satan seek to spread his influence and find those who are desperate. If someone around you tries to make you feel distanced from God or discourages you, please remember to distance yourself from them immediately. In this episode, the second character, Oliver, represents manipulators. Their goal is to ensure that you do not find peace. They constantly engage in manipulation, twisting and turning conversations to create conflict. As seen with Paul, a young student transitioning from school to college, he is still not very discerning and is being manipulated by Oliver against his own family. Many individuals in our society engage in such manipulative behaviors, deriving satisfaction from creating discord within families. These manipulators thrive on causing strife and exploiting others for their own enjoyment. Now, let's proceed to see what happens next in this episode. I'm back now. I'll decide later where to put this. It's my prayer time, so I'll pray first. After that, I'll hang this picture in my room and keep the book with my favorite ones. Let's see how much truth there is in Catherine's words and how much is false. Oh Lord, today has ended, and I hope that my coming days will be filled with happiness. Indeed, no power can stand before your might. Grant me children, bless my husband with a healthy life and protect us from all troubles and hardships. Make the coming days easier for us. I firmly believe that you love me and listen to my prayers. Sometimes you may delay answering, but even then, there is wisdom in your timing. I pray in the name of Jesus, Amen. Where did the book and scenery that my friend Catherine gave me go? I had put them on the table just before I prayed and now they were suddenly missing. How could they disappear so quickly? I had placed them on the table right before my prayer, and now they are gone. Oh no, how could they just vanish like that? No, this can't be happening. The thoughts running through my mind and what I'm being told, could it be true? If it is true, does Catherine follow Satan? Because as soon as I mentioned Jesus, the scenery and book disappeared from my house. No, am I dreaming? Or is this reality? This means that Catherine is on the wrong path, and that path is not God's but Satan's. Because on Satan's path, all happiness is temporary, not permanent. Those who walk on God's path face difficulties, but then God helps them and shows his mercy upon them. I understand now that my friend Catherine is not right for me. I should remove her from my life. When God decides to bless me with a child, he will do so in his own time. I will not keep anything in my house that allows Satan to enter. I had a lot of fun manipulating Paul against his parents. I incited him well against his siblings. It will be very satisfying to see him cause fights at home and create tension. Everyone in that house will be stressed out, and I derive great pleasure from causing such distress. Paul? My brother where are you going? What's it to you? Why should I tell you where I'm going? Actually, today daddy has a surprise for you. He said that on this date, he would announce a surprise for you. That's why I'm telling you that papa is coming home from the shop, and he has something special for you. He told me not to tell you, but he bought you your favorite motorcycle. Really? Are you serious? Daddy actually bought my favorite motorcycle? Yes, daddy booked it for you a week ago. He said he wanted to give you a surprise, and today is the day for that surprise. So please, don't go anywhere because daddy is bringing the bike for you today. I was so wrong. Oliver manipulated me so much against my family that I turned against my parents. You should ask for forgiveness from God and also from daddy for being so rude to him. He was really hurt. He loves all of us equally. Please don't fall for anyone's manipulation again. Yes, I promise. 
I will never let anyone manipulate me again. You have watched this video and hopefully understood many important things. We should always eliminate two types of people from our lives permanently. 1. Those who try to distance you from God and lead you towards evil. 2. Those who manipulate you against your family, inciting you to go against them. Stay away from anyone who tries to influence you in these harmful ways. Thank you for watching Nergia Cartoons. May God bless you all. Amen. See you tomorrow with a new topic. Take care, everyone. Bye.